All right, so I'm gonna show you how to install a Roy Pal lithium battery model S5156, which is their entry level battery. Um, we're gonna be putting this into a 2006 EasyGo TXT. Now the battery tray is gonna be the same um, as far as 96 and up. So as you can see, I've already removed the batteries out of this one. So you're gonna remove everything, including your tie down rods. And then with the lithium battery, you're gonna get your mounting brackets, which these are for the TXT. And here's the model number for that. All right, let's turn this battery over. Okay, so now you got the battery on its side. You're gonna install these brackets facing outward. So as you can see, they're gonna be going towards the outside so they can fit in that battery tray. Now you're gonna get hardware with it. So you're gonna put your hardware in. Let me go ahead and bolt this down and be right back. All right, now that we got the hardware in there, we're gonna snug them up. But I am gonna loosen them up once I get them into the golf cart so we can make sure these brackets are centered. All right, got the mounting brackets on. It's ready to go in. We're gonna put it on the front side of the battery tray. We're not gonna use the back side. Now you want your terminals on the side where your controller is um, so you're able to easily mount up your uh, positive and negative to it. Um, so as you see on this side, it lined up pretty well. But on this side, it's crooked. So I'm gonna loosen those bolts up and then I'm gonna line it up uh, properly. Now that I got that bracket lined up good, I can go ahead and tie down my hardware. So as you can see, you have holes down here to secure it to the golf cart. Now they're gonna be on both sides. So since you have a good amount of space here, or since we have a good amount of space here, I'm not gonna remove the battery, um, you know, mark the holes and remove the battery. What I'm gonna do is just go ahead and drill right through it while it's sitting in here. Um, Cause it looks like I have plenty of room. All right, now that I've got all four holes drilled on both sides, I'm going to use the hardware that was included and go ahead and bolt it down to the battery tray. Now note that earlier I said this is a 2006. They normally came in a 36 volt. This one has been converted to a 48 volt. Um, so we're able to use the, as you can see, it says 51 volts. It's a 48 volt golf cart. And this is the uh, Roy Powell 48 volt battery for a 48 volt golf cart. Uh, do not use this battery unless you can do the conversion on the 96 through 2010 and a half, which all those are 36 volts. 2010 and a half and up or 48 volt. So you won't have to do any conversion. All you need to do is just do the battery installation. So now that I've got it bolted down on all four corners to secure it to the golf cart, um, when you get the battery out of the box, it's not actually powered on. You actually have to hold down the button right here, your main switch for a few seconds and it turns green to let you know that it's live. Now, if you're gonna let it sit for more than five days, which it says right here on the top, you wanna power it back off. And especially whenever you're working on the golf cart, so you're just gonna hold it down until the green light goes away. And then when that does, then your positive and then your negative are not gonna be live. So you can go ahead and work on getting your um, main, main battery cables hooked back up now, most light kits, like you see right here, are not set up for 48 volts. They're usually set up for 12. Let me walk over here and I'll show you. Now, on this kit, luckily, it says it on there. So you got the positive, but there it is, 12 volts. So this is not gonna work, just hooking this straight up to the battery. Um, what I'm about to do is actually run a voltage reducer and I'll make a different video for the voltage reducer that you can watch. But as far as the battery, it's in. Um, and the reason why you wanna hook it up this way, obviously, because you have battery cables. Now, in my kit that I ordered that came with the mounting brackets, came with new battery cables. So I'm gonna be using their battery cables, as you see right here. I'm gonna be using their battery cables to go and hook it up if they do not reach. 
If they do reach, then obviously you don't need these. But if they do not reach to so the positive and negative, I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt it from the controller and the solenoid. I'm gonna go ahead and run these to the battery. And then once you got them all hooked up, then all you do is you power on that battery and you're rocking and rolling. Now you'll get a new charger with it. You cannot use your charger, which this one came with the factory lead acid charger like this guy. So you cannot use this because um, you need a lithium battery charger now. So you should have got a new charger. You have to order it with it. Um, and it'll come with the, the charger port end, um, which this one's for a club car and you can tell because it says club CL right there. Um, I'm gonna be using an easy go in. Let's see which one it is. There we go. So it's gonna be the easy go plug. Um, which there's the part number. So all you do is you unpackage it, which I'll do that right now and I'll show you how that, that that's done. All right, so here's the charger cord. So this is the 48 volt charger port. It just plugs right into this guy. Once you push it in, it just snaps into place. So they're gonna send you the right cord for your golf cart now. The other end comes in a bag, very simple. Plugs right there, plugs into here, the other end of your wall, and it'll do its thing. Now, you do get a battery meter. Now, this guy is very easily installed. Now, as far as where you wanna run it to, that's up to you. It does come with plenty of wire um, to run it all the way up to the dash if you choose to, um, but it's just very simple. Goes right there, twist it till it snugs up, boom. Now you got to hold down your power switch to get it to turn on. When the light turns green and she's on, and then there it shows where your battery is actually at. Um, so obviously mine needs to be charged. So that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up everything and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, so I'm about to hook up my battery cables. So here's my positive, I'm obviously gonna mount it to this guy and it looks like my negative reaches all the way to the negative. So I won't have to use any additional battery cables it came with. Uh, they both have plenty of length. The only thing I'm gonna have to extend is the light kit um, as it will not reach. It's close, I may be able to cut it, uh, the zip ties and run it through the other side. But if I can, I gotta cut and extend these guys over. Um, and then you got to rehook up your existing receptacle, your charger port. So this I may have to extend as well um, if it cannot reach. Um, so obviously on this guy, the gray and red go to the positive. The black goes to the negative. So I've decided to turn the battery around, which wasn't that hard. The mounting brackets were already there. So all I did was I took out the, the two bolts right there to take it off of the mounting bracket on both sides and that just rotated the battery around and then just zapped it back down. The reason I did that is because I don't want to go through all cutting all this, cutting the receptacle, cutting the light kit. Um, it's just easier to just take their cable, which is super long, and just run it all the way around. And as you can see, that cable will reach just fine. So the negative, I'm gonna take off um, and put this cable on and then the positive which is down there on the solenoid I'm gonna take that one off and then run it over. Okay. I've got the battery cables hooked up I've got the red Battery cable going to my solenoid. I've got the black wire going to my controller um, Your controller will be different if you're using a factory controller um, Again, I decided to switch around the battery just so I don't have to worry about cutting as many wires um, Than I would have if I had turned it the other way facing the controller which looked more convenient at the time um, but let's go ahead and power it on and check our voltage. We're gonna wait for that green light to come on. All right, it is on. So I've already had to put one sticking on there, run out of hands here. The other one on the negative, we got 52 volts. So we are ready to power it on. All right, get that out of the way. I've already double checked on my wiring to see if it's all hooked up right. 
were powered on. Let's get her out of tow. And there she goes. So it was a success. So now this golf cart is converted uh, from lead acid to lithium. Again, do not use your factory charger. Um, you could catch the golf cart on fire because it's not a lithium battery charger. So I'll plug in the lithium charger and show you how that guy works. All right, so I got the charger hooked up. Got it going into an outlet with nothing else in it. This thing can draw a lot, so you don't want like a fridge or freezer plugged in with this um, or you'll start popping breakers. Um, so I've got my end here. We're gonna hook it up to the golf cart. Push it all the way in. After a few seconds, you'll hear the fan click on, which it just did. So now it's going, the fan is, and then it'll be blinking green to let you know that it's charging. Right there. So it's charging, it's doing its thing. Um, keep that away from boxes or anything else. That thing is gonna get warmed up pretty good. So you don't, you wanna let, the, let it ventilate. Um, but other than that, battery's in, it's driving. That is your lithium conversion.